God, will Demon Slayer ever stop being hype? It's water on fire. That's genius! So in a recent episode of Demon Slayer, spoilers for episode 9 of the Entertainment District arc, by the way, Tanjiro creates a new breathing style technique. In the episode titled Defeating an Upper Rank Demon, spoiler, they do not, <laughs> Tanjiro uses an attack that combines the calm fluidity of water breathing with the aggressive brutality of fire breathing. And yeah, it was rad. So rad that I could have made a video just talking about how cool the new move is. What do you want from me? I'm just a man. Sometimes things are just cool and you want to make a YouTube video about them. But even though the attack is visually stunning and a character learning a new move in an anime is always an exciting event, what I actually want to talk about are the narrative implications behind the technique. Yeah, joke's on you. You thought you were going to watch a fun video about a cool anime fight and instead you get to listen to some nerd talk about character development through action. Yeah, get pranked, idiots! Please like and subscribe if you want more analysis videos such as this one. The Entertainment District arc is packed to the brim with content. We're introduced to a new Hashira, the boys are girls, Nezuko got a new form, Inosuke... Inosuke? And through all of this craziness, Tanjiro goes through an incredibly important character arc. But it's done in a way that's so subtle that you'd be forgiven for missing it entirely. And that's because it's done through the invention of this new attack. Tanjiro's whole shtick is that he's sympathetic towards demons. He treats them with a solemn reverence and often prays for them after killing them. While other demon slayers like Inosuke see demons as exciting challenges to overcome, Tanjiro sees them as lost souls who have had their humanity stripped away from them. He'd always rather talk his way out of a conflict, coming to a mutual agreement rather than bloodshed. This is reflected in his water breathing technique. Tanjiro is calm and fluid. He'd rather act evasively than offensively. However, when Tanjiro confronts Daki, he finds that his water breathing techniques are no match for her raw speed and strength. It turns out Tanjiro isn't compatible with water breathing and is instead meant to use the far more aggressive fire breathing technique. And let me tell you, yeah, it's pretty damn aggressive. He thrashes Daki and almost manages to behead her before he discovers the adverse effects of this new technique. Apparently, if used for too long, this style of breathing will actually kill him. Anyway, yada yada yada, more fighting. And eventually, Tanjiro realizes that he needs to combine the power of fire breathing with the stamina of water breathing in order to make them both work for his body. So, where's this supposed hidden arc my pretentious ass was going on about earlier? Well, the exciting part about this isn't that Tanjiro learned a cool new attack, it's the symbolism behind it. There's a moment where Tanjiro's in his crazy ass bloody eye mode where he asks Daki why she's killing so many innocents. She gives a brief look into her backstory and Tanjiro basically says, fuck it, let's fight. Obviously, Tanjiro's never really successfully talked his way out of fighting a demon, but he usually tries a little harder than this. But he just doesn't care anymore. He doesn't want to hear her excuses or try to reason with her. He just wants blood. This is wildly different from the Tanjiro we've grown to know, and it just shows how much these demons are wearing on him. He just seems tired, so full of hate and pain that he doesn't even see this demon as worth redeeming. He's succumbing to the fire breathing technique, becoming more aggressive and offensive. You get the sense that Tanjiro wants to kill her not out of necessity, but out of vengeance. And that's why I think it's super important narrative that the fire breathing technique will kill Tanjiro if he uses it too long. Yeah, they probably did it to nerf its power in the same way that Goku and Vegeta can only fuse for like half an hour at a time, but I think there's some deeper narrative implications there as well. This technique is killing Tanjiro, the Tanjiro that only fights to protect people, the one that understands and respects the plight of demons. And yeah, that Tanjiro had faults. Who doesn't? He was unsure of himself, too evasive at times. But this Tanjiro is a dark, bitter entity that's lost sight of his own moral values. Tanjiro is eventually put in a situation where he needs to save somebody who's about to be eaten by a demon. He realizes that the only way he'll be able to save her in time without killing himself is if he merges the two breathing styles. But this isn't just a merging of sword fighting techniques, it's a merging of ideologies. Aggression isn't inherently bad. Some situations, uh, such as your friend being mauled by a demon, actually call for it. But this time, Tanjiro's focus is on helping someone rather than feeding into a sadistic bloodlust. This is such excellent writing because it adds weight and meaning to Tanjiro's moveset. This fight is over five episodes long, but it never gets boring or feels drawn out because the characters are developing through it. It's not just action 
action for the sake of hype, the characters are growing through combat. It doesn't feel like Tanjiro just came up with a cool new attack out of nowhere. The attack feels earned and impactful because it represents Tanjiro overcoming a personal struggle, which is only made more satisfying by the fact that he came to this conclusion entirely on his own. Water breathing wasn't strong enough and fire breathing was corrupting him. Nobody told him to mix the two styles, that was a decision he'd come up with by himself. This is how you tell an engaging story with meaningful action sequences. Fight scenes should never be breaks from the narrative, they should be complementary to it. Characters should develop through combat, they shouldn't end the fight feeling like the same character they started it as. And I don't mean they should just seem stronger at the end of the fight, I mean they should learn something from it. From their opponent, from the experience, from fighting with their friends. And what's great is you can pinpoint the exact moments in this episode that lead him to do this. After his fight with Daki, Nezuko goes on a bloodthirsty rampage and tries to eat a random civilian. Tanjiro has to subdue her and he does this by singing her a lullaby their mother used to sing. It works, and Nezuko, as well as the audience, ends up bawling their eyes out. Tanjiro's reminded again that Nezuko isn't in control of her cravings. There's a sliver of humanity trapped inside every demon that's just being smothered by their uncontrollable urges. This is the remorse that slipped away from Tanjiro when he was fighting Daki, and he needed this heartbreaking moment with Nezuko to regain it. This is the moment that, I believe, saved Tanjiro from fully succumbing to the the hatred that his fire breathing style almost let him fall to, as well as what contributed to him developing his combination technique. This fight is so engaging because it's constantly evolving, not just because the demons are revealing new forms and the slayers are unlocking new abilities, but because the characters are overcoming personal obstacles throughout it. And it's not just Tanjiro, everyone's developing. We learn more about Tengen's backstory and personality. We get insight into the type of suffering Nezuko's been going through being a demon. Inosuke learns the meaning of friendship and Zenitsu learns to stay the fuck asleep. You get the sense that all of these characters are gonna come out of this fight as changed people. I, either that or fucking dead. And that's such a great feeling to have because it makes you not only excited about the fight and to see its conclusion, but it makes you excited to see what's gonna happen afterwards. I want to see where Tanjiro's gonna be emotionally by the end of all of this. Will he still have his solemn respect for demons, or has this whole experience changed that? Demon Slayer is a masterclass in telling an engaging narrative through action, and I can't wait to see how it develops from here. If you like this video and you want to see more analysis type videos, make sure you like, comment, and share this one around. I actually have another analysis video about Mugen Train that breaks down its cool like narrative beats, uh, so make sure you check that one out too if you like this. And if you want to support the channel while also getting access to exclusive videos not found anywhere else, consider subscribing to my Patreon. I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons, Shadow Wolf Sage, Randy Lopper, Caitlin Skeen, Ruskiel, JWN5, Mon Mon Rage, Patrick, Joey Helbeg, Ginja Gen, Lucky Dog, Mick Toll, Gatin Arubia, The Crab Collector, Anna Coralina, Ben Mosier, Elenin, Austin R, Miriam Herrera, Robert G, Swobikins, Night Frost, Matthew Murdoch, Brendan, Greasy Night Queen, I Play Storm, and Annie. And as always, I will see you guys guys next time i think we go together like we sweaters and how weather you don't know and you would think that i would, would just be dying for you and i just don't know